The Canadian Apprenticeship Forum is a nonprofit organization that promotes apprenticeship training across Canada. The forum is hosting this series of webinars to help women living in Canada learn more about opportunities in the skilled trades industry. For part two of this series, we are pleased to welcome Stacey Porter, the Industry Human Resource Coordinator with the Canadian Nursery Landscape Association. Stacey will provide information on available career opportunities and give tips on how to approach obtaining a job in the horticultural sector. Welcome, Stacey. Thank you so much, and thank you, everyone. I am honored to be speaking to so many amazing women today. For those of you who are going through a career transition, I can totally relate to trying to find an industry that you hope will be rewarding. This is my second career after spending 15 years in information technology. I started to educate myself in 2013 about horticulture and the Canadian Nursery Landscape Association by telling people what I was thinking about doing. This in turn opened up doors of who I really should talk to. And then I met people in the industry learned from them, I went to workshops at the library to learn more about the industry, and then lo and behold, a year later, CNLA had just approved a brand new position, and that's why I'm here. My role at the association has really evolved into so much more, like trying to get the government to listen to us about adding green infrastructure into all of these new housing and building developments at the beginning of their plans, not at the end, just because they need something pretty as well as trying to encourage landscapers to become certified to increase their credibility in the industry, as well as trying to educate everyone about the environmental benefits of horticulture. Every day is different and every day is fun. Before I get into the presentation, I really want to share with you that everyone in this industry is full of passion. You too can experience this excitement just by going to a garden trade show in your area and you will see exactly what I mean. Everyone loves talking about what we do from what plants you should buy to the best trees to plant to cool your home or what plants to use to start a pollinating garden. This is a great career for those of you who want to be a part of projects that go from a piece of paper to real life, whether it's creating a park or a backyard or helping with a new renovation. It's a great career for those who want to be surrounded by people who absolutely love what they do. It's a great career for those who really want to help the environment. It's also a great career for those of you who want to spend most of your time outside. And at, at, at the end, it's also a great career for those of you who really want to continuously learn. If you're any of these people, then this is a great industry to explore. I really wanted to show a few facts about the landscape industry that you may or may not have known. Horticulture, landscape, gardening and green space preservation and enhancement provide many benefits to society, from economic and environmental, to health and well-being, to lifestyle, to community pride, to tourism, to aesthetics and recreation. The industry enhances lives. The horticulture industry also provides many potential solutions to a number of challenges of the 21st century, including pollution, climate change, the urban heat island effect, sun exposure, nature's deficiency in our children, and health. Our industry has more jobs than workers right now. We only gain 400 post-secondary graduates annually. We are expecting a huge shortfall. In the next 10 to 12 years, we will lose 150,000 skilled workers. There are so many opportunities and so few people. I would like to encourage everyone to watch this TED Talk if you haven't already. Jim Mumford has many YouTube videos, but this one is really compelling. Jim is from San Diego and his company is Good Earth Plant Company. He literally started with a flower bucket stand and 30 years later is an avid winning plantscaper, green roof and living wall designer. After his home was destroyed in a fire, he learned about the potential of green roofs and as such launched Greenscaped Buildings, which specializes in green roofs, living walls, and rainwater harvesting systems. Another video you will find inspiring is how Jim informs people about how toxic indoor air can be in the workplace and how to make it healthier with the addition of plants. This link is on the handout provided by Canadian Apprenticeship Forum. 
Before I get into the career options that are available to all of you, I wanted to share with you the results of the very hard work of people from the industry. See if you can guess what this picture is of. Believe it or not, this is a bus station in San Francisco, California. Incredible, isn't it? Green walls and roofs are quickly becoming one of the most common part of architecture, and the industry needs workers like you to keep it up and encourage people to implement them. This picture is actually a hotel in Singapore. It has won many international awards for the architecture and energy saving technologies installed all throughout the building. There are six sky gardens that define the hotel. This brings up another point. There are many advantages to green that we would not normally think about, such as soundproofing. In Germany, a concert hall was constructed incorporating plants. The high density resulted in such good acoustic quality that the German broadcasting station relocated to use the room for newscasting. Also, green walls could be put along train lines to reduce noise. Next time you're on a train, take a, look, take a look at the concrete and wood walls that you pass. For those of you in Ontario who have taken the GO train in the Toronto area, there are so many concrete walls blocking the train noise for homeowners. Why not incorporate green? There's an opportunity right there. The picture on the left, that's a circular roof. It's in Singapore as well. It controls flooding and stores 10,000 hectares of rain water. It's called the Marina Barrage. Singapore receives 100 inches of rain every year. When there is a heavy rain, the gates activate to release excess storm water into the sea when the tide is low. When high tide comes in, giant pumps drain excess storm water at the rate of an Olympic-sized swimming pool per minute. The reservoir meets 10% of Singapore's water demand. The green roof is really what I want to show you as it hosts popular activities such as picnicking and kite flying. It's got amazing views of the bay and downtown, and it has become a very, very popular tourist attraction. The picture on the right is a living wall. It's in Paris. It's 82 feet high. It was created by botanist Patrick Blank, and it features 237 different species of 7,600 plants. Green walls are critical. They absorb carbon. Succulents are amazing on ver vertical walls. They are extremely hardy, they don't need a lot of water, sun, space, or fertilizer, and they have some amazing benefits, such as they give more oxygen. Most people do not know that when photosynthesis slows down at night, plants switch to absorbing oxygen from the air around them. Succulents, however, have had to develop a special type of metabolism to adapt to harsher environments. Plants can take in carbon dioxide during the night and store to use for photosynthesis the next day, meaning that even when you're sleeping, these little plants are pumping out oxygen into the environment. They make healthier homes. According to a study at the Agriculture University of Norway, plants in interior spaces decrease the incidence of dry skin, colds, sore throats, and dry coughs. They clean the air. NASA conducted a very cool study about the best plants for reducing indoor air population. Sorry, air pollution. Many of those plants are succulents. The study is summarized in an infographic that I can provide to Canadian Apprenticeship Forum. From better indoor acoustics to better recovery in hospital patients, there is a growing body of research evidence that supports the idea that being around vegetation is just generally good for people, and succulents are no different. Now that I've shared some history and a few of the great benefits of working in horticulture, I will share with you some key career options. First of all, did you know that over 130,000 people employed in Horticulture Canada Half of them are located in Ontario. 50% of those working in the industry are expected to retire in the next five to 10 years, and yet industry is forecasted to double in size by 2021, a huge gap. Picture yourself in a career where you work with nature, creating beauty and enhancing the environment. Help make the world a greener place. Now could be the time for all of you to consider a career that provides social benefits, health and wellness benefits, environmental and recreational benefits to all of your communities. Take a look at this infographic. It's only one small example of the many, many careers available to you. When you look at it, you see words like lighting, interior landscapes, therapist, technician, architect. There are just so many careers. I'm really excited to share with everyone a great place to start is this website. 
CNLA funded this website with one of our provincial associations, Landscape Ontario. GreenCareersCanada.c is a portal that caters to educators, students, guidance counselors, and parents. It is a great resource to show you a profession that provides social, health, and wellness, environmental, and recreation benefits to our communities. Although we originally created the website to be geared to helping kids decide on a career path, it is a fabulous resource for all of you to expose you to the industry. It is not a job board. It's not advertising anything. It is simply an educational site that can show you career opportunities, career pathways, and resources for your job search. Listen to people in the industry speak about horticulture. Read stories of students who are in the sector and learn about how many different types of jobs are out there for you. I'm going to go through a few examples of jobs right now. Landscape design and landscape architecture. Design projects actually involve two different professional roles, the design component and the architecture. Landscape design typically involves an emphasis on many design factors from the conceptual stage through the final construction. Design factors include qualities such as site drainage, municipal building codes, soils, irrigation, human and vehicle access, recreational amenities, furnishings, lighting, proper safety, construction detailing, and other measurable considerations. Landscape architecture focuses more on urban planning, city and regional parks, civic and corporate landscapes, large-scale projects, and delegation to contractors after completing designs. Landscape architecture is the design of outdoor public areas, landmarks, and structures to achieve environmental, social behavioral, and aesthetic outcomes. The scope of the profession includes landscape design, site planning, stormwater management, environmental restoration, parks and recreation planning, green infrastructure planning, as well as private estate planning and design. A practitioner in the profession of landscape architecture is called a landscape architect. You could help design backyards or municipal parks with customers and clients in any green space and see your work come to life. There are plenty of ways to gain knowledge of landscape design. You can get involved with over 22 colleges across Canada who offer design programs. If you already have some design experience, you can become a certified landscape designer through CNLA and show your clientele that you're the best person for the job. Now, landscape designing can be either at the residential level or at the commercial level. In residential real estate, the concept of curb appeal is well understood. Curb appeal is the visual attractiveness of a property's exterior and makes it a significant impact on buyers. Well, that also applies to commercial properties. A commercial landscape contractor will help ensure that commercial property has curb appeal while also ensuring that the landscape does not impede pedestrian traffic flow, parking, or delivery routes. In addition, commercial properties are subject to different and often more stringent rules than private residences. For example, legislation may impact how hardscaping, like pathways and stairs, and ramps are designed and installed on a commercial property for those who require disability access, whereas residential properties are subject to less rigorous requirements. Once this work is all done, it needs to be maintained. Landscape maintenance is critical to the industry. You, keep, you help keep the landscape clean, healthy, safe, and attractive. I learned that landscape maintenance is a $77 billion industry in North America with almost a million employees working with over 400,000 businesses. There are lots of ways to gain credibility within landscape maintenance through becoming a certified landscape technician, specializing in either ornamental maintenance or turf maintenance. Another pathway is through the apprenticeship program. You can work during the summer and learn in the winter. The government supports this program, allowing you to collect employment insurance in the winter. Learn enough, and you could even start your own business. Installation is one of the biggest aspects of the industry and is in the most need of workers. If you like machinery at all, then this is the avenue for you. They like to say in the industry, rip out the old, install the new. Hence, Hardscaping can include paved areas, driveways, retaining walls, stairs, pergolas, patios, fences, walkways. It can be stone, it can be wood, it can be concrete. Basically anything that's inanimate. Softscape refers to live horticultural elements such as flowers, plants, shrubs, trees, flower beds. So those roles are planting, mowing, trimming, aerating, spraying, digging, etc. Grounds maintenance, I know it sounds like landscape maintenance, but this is an industry in itself. There are thousands of job opportunities for grounds that need tending across Canada. From universities to provincial parks, there will always be work that needs to be done. Grounds management roles include golf courses, schools, 
resorts, and public parks. If you like being outside most of the time, working with a nursery might be a good option. This is really big in BC. If any of you on the call are from British Columbia, a nursery is where the plants are propagated. They're created from seeds or cuttings or bulbs. They're grown to a size that can be sold. So there are retail nurseries that sell to us, the public, and then there are wholesale nurseries that sell to businesses, which would be other nurseries or commercial gardeners or private institutions. Nurseries can also specialize. An example is they can sell one type of plant, such as ground cover or rock garden plants, or they can produce bulk stock, such as seedlings for fruit trees or timber trees, or they can produce stock that is just seasonal, such as poinsettias or tulips. You could be part of helping create an ornamental product that will be at your local nursery or big box store. As most of you know, a garden center is a retail operation that sells plants and related products. They buy their stock from nurseries and wholesalers. If you love gardening, you can share your knowledge and you can grow your passion at a retail garden center. Learn more about plants and share your knowledge with the public. Be a part of growing the green industry from the number one place the public goes to get, to get its plants. I'm sure most of you have noticed how much garden centers have changed over the past decade. A lot of them now offer more merchandising so that they can sustain their businesses year round. It isn't unusual to walk into a garden center and to be able to buy clothes or jewelry. They've adapted to the seasonal issue and it allows them to keep staff year round. My local garden center, in fact, has turned itself, its greenhouse into a market from January to March. I think it's brilliant. Local vendors can sell their meats and cheeses as well as veggies and encourage healthy eating in the wintertime. Interior landscaping has become a huge part of wood cultures. Employers are beginning to see the healthy benefits of plants. The industry needs workers to take care of and install the plants within office buildings. In fact, I'm working in a building that is quite old. It's going to be renovated. We as staff have been asked what's important to us in our new space. I said natural light and plants. That is now going to be incorporated into the interior design plans. I'm just thrilled. I guess what I like to share with everyone, there are just so many opportunities. Um, I haven't even tapped into some of them, such as masonry. That is, is huge in terms of building walls and, and uh, rock gardens and, um, and waterfalls. You could be your own business in this industry. Once you learn, you could open up your own garden center or own landscaping company. The horticulture therapy is a big piece of this industry as well, which I will speak to a little bit more. But there are just so many opportunities. I really want to share with you behind the scenes. There are obvious roles right now that you might already have transferable skills for. All companies have some level of administration that is required, and in fact, you may need to be the jack of all trades. So if you like managing all aspects of a business and working with passionate people, target roles within horticulture. Could be a landscape architecture firm, could be a garden center, could be a nursery grower, could be a landscaping business. But all these businesses require some sort of administration, some sort of purchasing, some sort of finance, all of the behind the scenes roles that you might actually have some experience in already. I simply want to mention work habits because work habits within horticulture are the exact same as most roles that you're pursuing. What I want to spend some time on is the essential skills because they too, like any other role, are pretty basic. They require math and English. I think every role requires customer service. If physically fit seems like a tough skill, don't worry about it. Not all the roles require lifting 50 pounds. And if you're passionate about any of the roles I've mentioned that might require heavy lifting, there are tools and colleagues that will help you along the way. I really want to bring you back to the environmental and social aspects of the industry. This cannot be talked enough about, in my opinion. You can read on the slide what green infrastructure does. It's amazing. I want you to know that we here at CNLA are working with the federal government and we have made a submission that I would like to share a piece of with you so that it gives you a good overview of everything. This was an example that I uh, submitted recently. There are many opportunities for the nursery and landscape industry to have a positive impact on climate change. We are the industry whose products and services at all levels sequester carbon. Living green infrastructure development begins with proper landscape design and planning that allows green infrastructure to complement gray infrastructure and extend the lifespan of roads, roofs, and pipes. 
The horticulture industry is a vehicle of information for what landscapes are and how they function in urban environments to mitigate the effects of climate change. The opportunity to educate the public, the government, and the youth of today are endless. From reducing the impacts of weather with windbreaks and shelter belts, to assisting municipalities in reducing maintenance costs and deriving new economic benefits, we are already poised to help with climate change. I know I've already talked about green walls, roofs and walls earlier on. There are companies that actually focus on this. They focus on green wall installation and maintenance. They are not only aesthetically pleasing, but they offer health benefits, benefits to any indoor space. Again, I encourage you to view the videos and research the many benefits that they offer. There is so much on the internet. The same goes with water features. There is a lot of research that proves looking at water can restore blood pressure and heart rate to normal, and having a water source in the area lessens the pain experienced by patients recovering from surgeries. Flowing water emits negative ions that play an important role in reducing stress. They also attract dust particles and actually purify the air. This improves air quality and the evaporation of water leads to vapors which filter the air and reduce pollution. Water also lessens the annoying noise like road traffic, dogs barking, neighbors. I want to highlight this so that we can all understand the benefits. It's not just aesthetics, it's an environmental and social asset. I'd like you to take a look at this infographic while I share with you living green infrastructure provides many economic benefits. It reduces building energy use in urban heat islands. Green roofs, green walls, turf and trees can make buildings more energy efficient and climate friendly by reducing heating and cooling demands and absorbing greenhouse gases. As cities expand, green infrastructure continues to absorb and retain heat. While to balance, living green infrastructure naturally cools cities and complements the gray infrastructure. Flooding is reduced as soils retain water and reduce stormwater volumes. Keeping rain out of the drains is good. This combined with sewer systems helps reduce pollution and floods. Research indicates that shade trees planted in urban centers can save money while reducing the air temperature up to six degrees. I'm a runner and everyone has asked how I could run in this heat that we've had in southern Ontario this year. It's because I run in a conservation park. You can feel the temperature drop as soon as you get onto the trail. It is literally like walking through a wall of coolness. Shading pavement can reduce its surface temperature by up to 20 degrees which can increase its life expectancy by 10 to 25 years and cut maintenance costs in half. For every thousand trees, nearly a million gallons of stormwater runoff is prevented. Again, there's so much information available to you if you're interested in this aspect. Spend some time on the internet. You will be astounded at what you learn. The health of all of us depends on the ecosystem. There was a recent study that shows how the health of millions of people is threatened by the failing ecosystem, and this is global. We can each help by starting locally. There is an association called the Canadian Horticulture Free Association that has a primary goal to promote and advance the use of horticulture therapy in Canada. They have guest speakers and authors sharing their research and experiences. In fact, one of their doctors has researched the connection between nature and human health. She is speaking at a conference on how veterans are healing themselves through farming and outdoor activities. Working with plants to help the elderly or those that are ill or the disabled is a great way to get in touch with your nurture and nature side. There are many paths to succeeding in the industry. You can learn hands-on in the workplace, you could do an apprenticeship, you could get your certification, or you could go to college or university. Regardless of the pathway you do choose to remain successful, a journey of lifelong learning is definitely important. Canadian Apprenticeship Forum is definitely the expert on apprenticeship. I want to share with you there's a hands-on training program where landscape horticulture skills are learned. It's about 5,400 hours in the workplace. In school, it's about two years. The completion can take anywhere from two to five years. It's worth noting that every province has a different setup and structure for apprenticeship, so I encourage you to check with your local provincial office and find out what the requirements are. In your reference handout from CAF, there is a video made up by some of my colleagues. It's quite well done. It's funny. It's to encourage companies and their employees to become certified. Not only does this build credibility, but it ensures that professionals from across the country 
comply with standards and industry's best practices. Certification is available for technicians, retail horticulturists, designers, and managers. Certified individuals are part of an elite group of professionals. It's comprised of more than 200,000 employees in the industry. If you're curious as to what you would learn, you will learn anything from plant science to plant health to workplace safety to turf management. There are so many different business units. It's amazing what you will learn if you proceed down this road. Like any career choice you make, there are always opportunities for advancement. There are many workshops and events that support women in all sorts of careers, not just horticulture. In the past, there have been conferences on advancing women in agriculture, and most of the speakers share their own stories of rising through the ranks and handling motherhood, family, and career. I would like to highlight Jennifer Christie, who is someone who has found her passion in agriculture. and She's volunteered most of her life at the same time as she works full time. She's been a leader of Girl Guides, she's been a director of 4-H, and she works permanently for John Deere. Her advice for women is very, very simple. Network. She says, have a goal in mind, write it down, decide what you need to do in order to get there. Nobody's going to look out for you and your career but yourself. You need to ask and volunteer for opportunities, she said. I want to see more women be successful and have opportunities. I really hope that you have found this inspiring and it's given you all some ideas about the options that are available to you. I would really like to thank you for your time and I'm available for some questions if anybody has. Um, if you have questions after, I'm sure that CAF can uh, send those off to me and I, I will get some answers back to you as soon as possible. Um, for now, I'd like to open up the floor if there are any questions. Thank you so much, Stacey, for that wonderful presentation. Uh, there are so many exciting careers available in the horticulture industry, uh, and, we're, uh, and we're so excited to see all of the uh, opportunities available. Um, for those on the line who are interested in pursuing a career uh, in the horticulture industry and are maybe looking at um, doing an apprenticeship in the horticulture industry, um, what are some of the most common barriers faced by women um, in the the industry and you know what what suggestions do you have on how to overcome those barriers uh, I think the obvious barrier that we all face is, is not being taken seriously in a male dominated industry uh, I have to say that horticulture really has seen an uptake with women in the industry trades such as construction and electricians and millwrights in my opinion they actually have far more barriers than us I think the physical strength that some of the roles require is a barrier. You hear women are not strong enough. I think I mentioned it earlier, but you don't have to be six foot two, 200 pounds to dig a hole or carry a tree. Technology is here now that helps you do that. Workers are using backhoes to carry wood for a fence or stones for a garden. The industry's really evolved. I think other barriers could be the lack of awareness of the courses that are offered to you in the industry uh, and what's available. I hope today has actually opened up some doors for people. Uh, another barrier might be location. Uh, growers and nurseries tend to be in the rural areas. Uh, BC is a great example. So it might be difficult to get to some of them if you don't drive. I also know another barrier is family commitments, uh, especially if you're a single mom raising a family. The hours are long in the busy season, so you really need to have a good support system. Thank you so much. And uh, lastly, uh, the last question on our screen there, what tips uh, can you share with apprentices when looking for an employer sponsor? Um, what are employers looking for uh, and how can uh, app apprentices approach them uh, and uh, be successful in their uh, look for a sponsor? Uh, that's a great question. I, I've been fortunate to work for a service provider. So uh, when I worked for a service provider, here in Ontario, a candidate really stood out for me and it's really stayed with me. He was looking for help with a script to call employers to see if they're interested uh, in using him in their apprenticeship program. He came into my office with an impressive spreadsheet of all the electrical companies in the area with their names, their emails, and their phone numbers. He literally took the initiative to create this because he said, employers aren't going to call me, they're busy running their businesses. This was his cold call list for cold calling employers and all he needed from me was a script and to practice. I was so impressed. If I could give you one piece of advice, it would be to prepare an elevator script, as we call it, when you do call employers. 
They call it elevator because if you were on an elevator with a stranger and had to sell yourself, what would you say? It's all about first impressions. And of course, then the door opens. The more you call employers, the more comfortable you will be. You're marketing yourself. And if you can't market yourself, how can you expect other people to? So it takes practice. Since you're talking about yourself, the content should be pretty easy, but it's all in the delivery. Remember, just because an employer doesn't have a spot for you today doesn't mean they won't tomorrow. Follow up with thank you emails. Keep in touch with those that you feel will be your employer of choice. This is in itself building your network. Gone are the days where you send your resume or portfolio and wait for the employer to contact you. You have to stand out amongst your competitors. Relationship building will lead you to the right employer. Thank you again, Stacey. Uh, on behalf of everybody on the line and the Canadian Apprenticeship Forum, uh, we really appreciate you coming and spending the time to share your expertise. Uh, if you do have questions, uh, you can visit our Ask the Expert tool on the CAF uh, website, which is caf-fca. Point org, uh, and you can reach out to me directly. Um, I will be sending in a follow-up email with a recording of the webinar and the handouts that we spoke about. Thank you again, everybody, for attending the webinar, and have a wonderful day. Thank you.